Hello, this is Chad Riggs reporting from the Renaissance Center for My Town 16 News. We're here for, on President's Day for Black History Day, which is a great, uh, great year for that to coincide. And we're here with Stella. Stella, tell us a little bit what, about what's going on. Uh, well, today we're celebrating black history. Uh, we have a lot of different workshops. Our theme this year is black young artists. And we have a lot of our local artists that are either from this area and has come back or still live in our area. Okay, is this something that you typically do every year or is this the... This has been our second year uh, and we hope to continue doing this every year. Well, it's an art theme and I see there's lots of uh, artistic works around. There seems to be a lot of different things going on. What are some of the other activities you have this year? We have drumming, we have uh, visual art, we have dance, we have drama, we have a singing workshop, we have uh, African cuisine uh, tasting, and uh, we also have workshops for preschoolers. Well, thanks. Uh, I see we've got uh, Lavanda and Sierra over here. What are they doing? Lavanda Price is a local hairstylist uh, here in town. It's, um, what's the name of your shop? Her name's Lavanda Price. I'll let her introduce her own <laughs> hair shop. But she's doing our head wraps today. Well, LaVonda, tell us a little bit about your uh, hair shop. I work at Visions Hair and Nail up in Holland, and we do a little bit of everything, um, from head wraps to braids to press and curl, shampoo and sets, you name it, we can do it. Even if you need your hair glued on, we can do that too. So is this a uh, wrap you're working on here? Yes, it's an African wrap that we do. It looks great. Do you have any recommendations for my mop? We can cut it, <laughs> set it, perm it. We can even weave it. Well, there's a, there's a lot of options. Yeah, Maybe I should start with a hair. cut. <laughs> beautiful hair. There you go, Miss Sierra. She's our African queen today. This is the granddaughter of Miss Stella. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's very nice. It is. She's well, a volunteer today. She's happy. Some of our young people have actually went through the workshops, but then they are also volunteering to give back uh, and helping with some of the younger people or helping some of the artists in their workshops. And I think Sierra has been working a variety of workshops. She's been into graphic arts, to drama, to actually the cook, cooking segment. So she's an all-around child. Oh, yes. Well, Sierra, what do you think so far of LaVonda's work? I think her work is very good, and I love the new head wrap going on up here. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now you need to come well, today to in our drama hair. workshop, we have Carlton Relaford, better known as Star. That's his stage name. Uh, he is a Doug, I mean a DB alumni, and he lives in Knoxville now. Has come back in the area to give back. So his workshop was all about teaching uh, the drama and plays that he does as a living in Knoxville with the carpet bag company. And then you're back, and now you can come up under him. There you go, that way. Are you good? All right. All right. Well, Stella, we've uh, got somebody else here. Why don't you introduce them? We do. This is one of our members that was on the board that helped plan this. This is Randy Leeper with Walmart. Walmart's been one of our big sponsors. So um, I'll let Randy tell you what Walmart does. Okay, Randy, tell us how you're involved with this today. Well, we were glad to help out this year, first of all. And we helped with Jerry Harrison. Uh, she's doing the African cuisine. And we have provided all the food for the African cuisine, the potatoes and coconut and all that. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know they had coconuts at Walmart, and that's great to be able to... Can you get those there? Did you have to send off special for them? No, we already we carried them all the time, the sweet potatoes, the coconut, the fresh coconut. She wanted coconut milk and all that, yes. Oh, great. That was good. I didn't know that. So that's a good plug for Walmart, I think, today. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we have a workshop that is dismissing now. Uh, but this is one of our board members, and I would love for each and every one to know who our board members are in the community that's giving back. And Walmart's always been a good thing, you know, to have in our community because they always are giving back to us. So 
and I'm glad they celebrate black history with us this month. Well, if somebody wanted to be a uh, sponsor or a board member, who should they get in touch with? Uh, they can get in touch with myself at area code 423-276-6541 or Lucy Fleming. She's like my everything to me. Uh, and she is 423-392-8800 at the Chamber of Commerce. Hello, I'm here with, uh, what's your name? Takis Hutcherson. Takis? And uh, what is it you're working on? Um, graphic communications. Oh, well, this is great. You, you're cutting stuff out there? and Yeah. What are you going to put that on that piece of paper and use it for uh, Use it for what? I don't know. We get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got trend setting, dazzling glamour, fantasy. you got some hairstyles there, some fashion, some boots over here going up a staircase, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Nice work. Have you had any? What, what else have you done here today? Um, volunteered with the food. Oh yeah, what was your favorite one? I'm headed that way soon. I didn't try any of them. You didn't try any of them? None. The um, sweet potato bread's good. Smelled good, or? <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. We're here in room 228, and I want to find out a little bit more about uh, what's going on here. How's it going? It's going great. Um, what we're doing here is a graphic design uh, project. Uh, We've just uh, reviewed some basic elements of what design is and how it relates to actual fine art and how they're similar. Uh, so what we did uh, was get a project uh, to kind of convey an idea or a feeling that you have uh, about a dream or just social commentary and just wanted them to experience uh, how it is to be a designer and how to convey an idea with using images and type. You got a lot of different magazines here, and what's your name? I'm sorry, I didn't Keon get that. Keon Hale is my name. Yeah, I'm from Nashville. I grew up here in Kingsport. Um, went to Dominus Bennett High School, and I'm actually uh, working uh, in Nashville as a graphic designer. I have my own company, and uh, things are going well. So, do you get a lot of font questions at this point? Are people uh, using mostly serifs or non-serifs? Uh, not, not a lot of font questions. I think we're still just trying to get the understanding, the basic understanding of design and how the elements may relate to each other on the page. So. You've seen mostly food-based items or fashion? Or? Uh, fashion. I've seen a lot of fashion today. I, I've seen uh, some food, but mostly fashion. I think a lot of these kids are creative in their own right, and I think uh, this is a great step up for them. Because uh, when I was a kid, I, I didn't have a lot of these outlets like you know this program, so I think this will be great in, in uh, helping develop some new artists. Well, thanks for speaking with right. us today. It was great to meet you. All right, you too. What's your name? Charles Maxwell. Well, Charles, we're here at uh, Black History Day at the Renaissance Center, and I was just going to ask you, uh, Stella says you're on the committee. Yes, sir, I am. And uh, how much preparation goes into an event like this? Uh, quite a bit. We've been working on it here the last few months, trying to get it all together, and mainly my part in it is just providing the transportation. Oh, really? That's great. It's a lot of people that have to come to an event like this. Yes, sir, it is, pretty much. Was it easier? Uh, were you involved with it last year at all? No, this is my first year actually been involved with it, and uh, it's a pleasure. I know stuff sometimes gets easier the second time around, but a lot of times it gets bigger, too, every year. Right, right, and we kind of look forward to getting bigger, too, you know, growing, you know, with it being, the, I believe it's the second year that this has been going on. So, you know, it's pretty good turnout right now, so hopefully it'll be a lot bigger next year. Would you uh, have any advice for people that want to get involved with the committee? Well, just come on the board, and we could always use different ideas, you know. So, have, you know, every little bit helps. All right, Charles, nice to talk with you. All right, you too. Thank you. I split rhythm sections like intersections, then resurrect them through natural selection. I brew like a witch's potion, incinerate like a deepest notion, take pieces of your life song and recompose them, distribute them right under your nose and sell you a copy. Who's going to stop me? Who? You? And what army? Leave you in a bed of rocks like Fred and Barney, alarming like burglar-proof housing, arousing like ginseng grown underwater, praying these words will feed my sons and daughter, protecting their seeds for what will occur, racial slurs and Cultural blurs hitting nerves of people that don't feel me, leaving footprints on mercury, turning my back on society, cause we be deeper than the mind can see, planting beat swarms and poetry to manifest unity. Peace. 
Okay, we're here to find out a little bit more about African cuisine, and uh, who am I speaking with? You're speaking with Jerry Harrison. Well, Jerry, I see you've got a lot of little things to try out here, many different kinds of stew and plants and different kinds of breads. Tell us about those. Yes, what we decided to do is take some of the very common foods that you would find in Africa and mix those into two main dishes and two types of breads. So I can start here with uh, the main dish and kind of tell you a little bit about the one that we prepared here. But this one here is... um, um, uh, it actually is an African dish that actually a lady came over and talked with me about. Well, she really made it in my kitchen, and ever since then I've decided that it's one of my meals that I like. But it's just regular rice. But one unique thing about the beef is that the way that we work with our beef, we put it in water and we start boiling and we do all everything else to it. But with this one, you have to marinate it with the seasoning and let it cook and make its own broth and you don't put any water in it so have, and it only takes half the amount of time to cook uh, it's tender within an hour and you can put your seasoning your your paste on it and you got your dish and the main th- what we like to do is to kind of do it the same way that they did theirs in Africa you put either plantains on it slice you know you put your rice on it first and then you take your um, stew put it on top then you put sliced uh, bananas, which that, that is the easiest thing that we can get. I do have some plantains on the end, but we can get our hands on bananas a lot easier than we can plantains and a lot cheaper, at least that. So this is one of the main dishes and that m- most 99% of the people will eat that one, when you this? say. What is this called? We call it beef stew. It's African beef stew and rice. Okay. And rice is a, a staple that you can get anytime. We eat a lot of rice here, and rice is so much better for you than potatoes and a lot of times. So that's if you want to eat that. Now, this one here is what we consider to be um, an African stew. It has uh, collard greens, and uh, you can put um, different types of meat, but I prefer uh, smoked turkey. But uh, it doesn't have any water in it either. You use uh, chicken broth. Now, I don't know whether African will have a lot of chickens, but uh, I stick with the chicken broth here. But what's so unique about this one is once you get everything mixed in, it has the carrots, it has the smoked turkey. You got one meal in in one, and you got the whole meal in one, and all you got to do is to get your side if you want a bread or or dessert and something to drink, and you're ready. You got that one. So I'm surprised that the kids are enjoying this one, too. So maybe you think it's the cook or you think it's the ingredients. I hope I hope it's both. I think it's both. That sounds interesting. <laughs> There's got to be, uh, you know, birds over there that just uh, whatever's in the area is probably. Yeah, anything that uh, you can get your hands on uh, that's plentiful is what we try to, to deal with. Now, we talked about peanuts, and, and I have to say that, you know, peanuts is just not an African uh, um, uh, food here because my I talked to the kids today about my dad had a little peanut patch and we would have to actually get the peanuts, uh, pull the peanuts off the vine and I had, didn't have any real but we did have a, a, a picture of the peanuts but talked about how we would actually roast our peanuts in the fireplace sometime because we lived in the city but my dad had a homestead that we would go to it, and we did all the things that you would do in the country. And my grandma always would bring back some of the old customs, and I think maybe that's what I picked up on a lot. Uh, but we talked to the kids about how important the peanuts were and, and uh, their high in proteins and how important it is to use the oil. And we've used uh, peanut oil to mix in whatever I've mixed today, even with the uh, sweet potato bread. Okay. So uh, once we talked about the... Um, sweet potatoes and how we use the sweet potatoes and how we preserve them in the winter time. Uh, we let the kids sample some sweet potato bread. So uh, this is the cream cheese, of course, the cream cheese is American. That's what we threw in there. But they had cream cheese and, and sweet potato bread. And uh, we talked about how you, whatever you have plentiful, if it's nuts, you got different types of nuts, fruits, you just throw it all in the bread and come up with a unique taste. So we, t- we have peanut, uh, sweet potato bread, and banana bread. And uh, the bananas that we talked about, how you cut them up and put them on your main dish as far as working with... Um, Desserts and salads, whatever you just you can just combine almost anything. Um, the coconuts. Uh, it was amazing that most of the students have not seen a real coconut um, plant here, and I only had a tree that they could see the plant itself. But when we were growing up, we actually had to um, grade the coconut. 
when you said coconut cake, you had a job in front of you. You did not, yeah, you did not deal with the bag here. We didn't do the bag. You had to actually, you had to put a hole. And if you look at it, you had three holes here. And my dad always knew which hole to go in that was really soft. Now, I don't know how he would knew, but he would always put a hole there. And we would take the... uh, the coconut milk out and you would put that in the cake or whatever you need it with and then he would crack it and you would take out the coconut and you had to use a grater. Now I was talking to the kids we had a metal one uh, this would, is Tupperware. Now Tupperware did not have one back in the 50s and 60s you had the metal one but you know you had to take the coconut and you actually had to grate it and with the Tupperware it's wonderful you know you catch it in there but you had to be very careful when you were actually great and when we were growing up with the metal one because she ended up with no knuckles if you were not careful but you know it was worth it when we got finished you can never get a coconut cake to taste as good with fre- as fresh coconut so but how many of us do that now not very many um let me uh, come kind of mention to you about the bananas and with the kids we talked about the regular bananas and the plantain now we use bananas, and this is all we've gotten left from, from the day because we, we put it on different things. You got it into your breads. Here they had tried bread that had bananas in it. We cut it, on, cut it up on top of their main dish that they had with the beef, and it gives it a different taste. Now, the plantain, usually we just kind of fry these. Oh, yeah. But what I was trying to tell the kids is that you can take green bananas. I mean, the green was not you know, changing, but those that are really, really green, and you can fry green bananas and have french fries just like you would regular french fries, and and it's a lot less calories and a lot more uh, vitamins than you would with the potatoes. So maybe next time that's what we'll do with the plantain and and the green bananas. But I, I suppose that about covers what we usually, what we've been talking to the kids about, unless you have some questions. Well, I was just going to say it certainly all looks delicious. It uh, It's interesting to find out about some of the different items that you, you know, they use in Africa, and it's a large continent, and so many things could be made in diverse cuisine, and maybe we see how some of the things we eat today have oh, origins it, with that. It really does. It really does. And we really don't know how much, you know, because there's so many foods overlap into uh, African foods and American foods. When we put them together, we don't think about, you know, where they come from and how we're doing it. But it all depends on the ingredients and how you prepare it as to what type of meal you're eating a lot of time. And um, it's, it's kind of fun putting things together and, and getting opinions on how it tastes. You know. Well, thanks for sharing with us today, and I know that everybody's enjoyed it. And I hope people come out next year and sample some of the cuisine you've got here well, today. Well, it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun working with the kids today. Thanks. Well, there's a lot of people that come out to an event like this. And, uh, Stella, who do we have here? We have uh, Pastor... Larry Muncy, he's with our board mayor in Ottoman, and I'm, I'm glad to see him out here uh, today. I think it's nice that the city officials come out and see what we're celebrating today. What have uh, you been able to check out a lot of the things here? Well, not, not yeah, I just got here and started talking to Stella, but it looks like a great crowd, a great event, lots of people, and uh, I'm very happy that the BMA can be supportive. So. Yeah, we're all... We're all very grateful. I know, Stella, you feel pretty good about it? I feel excellent. I mean, today we've had a great crowd. The workshops have went really well. I think everybody's pleased with everything that's going on here today. So I think it's a great success. you have any tips, top, top three things he should see before he leaves? Uh, I think he should taste the African cuisine. Definitely. That's a must. That sounds and, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the drum workshop, that's another one. And I think the drama and the song workshop room. Well, and I can't leave out the headdress because look at my head. So, <laughs> But I, I think all the workshops are great. And I think Keon Hale's workshop is a great one, too. So... I can't pick a top three. No, that's hard. When, you're, when you put on an event like this, they're all, they're all favorites. Really is. Well, we certainly appreciate the BMA's presence here. I know everybody does. And, uh, you know, look forward to seeing everybody here next year. Thanks. Thank we you. Okay, we're here in room 209, and we're going to find out a little bit about visual art. So what's your name? Star. Star. And uh, what are you working on here? Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Bookmarks? That's great. Do you read a lot? Yes. You have to uh, always find your place in the book? Yes. What's your name? Deontay. Deontay, uh, what are you working on? 
Mm, bookmark. So is everybody doing a bookmark? What's uh? What are you gonna make on your bookmark? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's your name? Amara. Amara, what are you gonna make with your bookmark? Uh, I don't know. Is this your baggie here? Yeah. What's in the bag? Um, there's different stuff like there's a magnet. Um, there's marble and. Um, different stuff like paper, and here's a little hat, and there's like a little thing made out of something. I don't know. Well, are you going to glue those on to the bookmark? Yes. Well, great. Do you read a lot of books? Yeah. Yeah, I try to read as much as I can, but I guess a good bookmark would be a good thing to have. What's your name? Tamara. Tamara, what are you working on? A bookmark, too? A magnet. A magnet? Oh, is it a bookmark magnet? No. No? What, what, what kind of bookmark? Or what kind of, what kind of magnet? I don't know. Are you making it for yourself, or is this a gift? My mom. Your mom? Did you, uh, is it for Valentine's Day? Nope. I was going to say it would be late if it was. <laughs> Did you get any, uh... What else? Do you make lots of nice things for your mom? Yep. Well, that's great. Anybody else want to say anything? You do? Um, I'm making a magnet, and it's going to be a bookmark magnet. Who are you going to make that magnet and bookmark for? For my mom. For your mom? Is it for Valentine's Day? No. <laughs> okay, well, it's a good thing. It's passed. Valentine's Day already passed, so I would today well today's the 16th so it's president's day and black history day here at the kingsport renaissance center my name is lydia wilson i'm a fiber art fiber artist from johnson city tennessee and i was asked to present a workshop for the children here and my choice for this year was uh, for dreamers only big big dreams high hopes and firm foundations uh, it's a workshop that the children are going to learn about dreaming and making dreams come true. It looks like uh, you've got a lot of different pieces of fabric here. Are the children are really happy with the different pieces of fabric? I hope so. I tried to choose fabrics that would, I guess, mm, relate to the children, kind of look like them, very textural, very layered, very bright, colorful, things like that. Now, what's the plan here? Are they taking the bookmarks home, or are they all going to weave them into one giant quilt? Take, no, this time they're making bookmarks or magnets. It just depends on what they want to do with their particular thing. What they'll create are magnets or bookmarks that will look like this. They'll create them out of the fabrics, the fiber, They'll have magnets, bubbles, there's verses that relate to dreaming and how dreams relate to their future. They will put all these pieces together to create this magnet or bookmark, whichever they do. It says, I have a dream. On the back of their bookmarks or magnets, they will be asked to write what they want to be when they grow up, what they want to do, hopes, dreams, wishes, anything. But they'll need to write something about what their dreams are and how they, I hope, have a, a plan to make them come true. It's art, it's history, and it's, uh, you know, uh, for the future and them to remind themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot. It was great speaking with you and uh, know that these kids are going to enjoy their bookmarks. I hope so. Well, uh, who am I speaking with here? Uh, my name is Yanomi, the artist. You know me, the artist, and uh, are we standing in front of your works here? Yes, we're standing in front of my work here. I do airbrush art, um, T-shirts, car hoods, all kinds of design work. I'll do it on cardboard, just working with kids. This is a really nice piece here. Can you tell me a little bit about what, you're, uh, what this is about? Well, a couple of years ago, let's see, this was made in 2005. And so a couple of years ago, the Ebony Club at um, Dobbins Bennett, they were doing a, a show. My son was a part of it, and so I did a backdrop for them. And this was a part of the backdrop, coming out of Africa. It's a fantastic piece. The people are 
Yeah, going Actually, this way, coming towards you. Right, right. The clo- they're closer here. Like this guy's eye is right up here, and this guy is closer to you. And then back here, it's further and further away. Yeah. Do you typically do pieces like this? Was for uh, the club? Well, this at- was for the Ebony Club at Dobbins Bennett, but the hood was for. My- I lost my mom in 1998, and so I did this uh, shortly thereafter that. Um, and then some of the art pieces around the wall I just do because I like, you know, um, ethnic-type art. And so some of them are cartoons, some of them are um, musical artists. The fantastic pieces. Now, do you have these uh, for sale somewhere? Or do you? Um, I work out of a studio, and people ask me all the time, what do I sell? I, I, I just like to do art. And so I found that uh, I was in the military for years, and so I always traveled and did art. And it was something that I just have to do. And so it's not so much trying to sell the art as it is just doing it for me. It's a, it's a great release for me. So I don't, I don't worry about selling it so much as I do doing it. It's an expression. Yeah, it's an expression. And then I get an opportunity to work with kids more than what I do. I work at the school in the school system. So then I work with kids twice as much even doing the art. What uh, sort of format do they do best with? The kids, the... the the larger the picture and the more colors that they can use, they enjoy. Uh, it, really, the messier they can get, they enjoy it. But then again, to tell you the truth, that's how I am. The messier I can get, I, I enjoy it more. Usually when I come out after a night of painting, you'll know that I was painting. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for speaking with us today, right. Inome, and I hope people come out here to check out some of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, there's been a lot going on here today, and I'm going to sit down here and take a break. And I don't know, it looks like there's some other stuff going on here. Maybe it's work involved. I don't know how long I want to stay here. What's, uh, what's your name? Douglas Rutherford. Douglas, nice to meet you. And uh, what is going on here? Well, I'm just working the restoration stand at the present, but I'm president of the Douglas Alumni Association. And we have an exhibit on the other side of the atrium here. Uh, some uh, mem- memorabilia from Douglas, some old yearbooks, and we got some school books that we're trying to sell. So it's just been a great day here. Well, for those of you who may be new to the community or stuff, can you tell us a little about Douglas? Uh, Douglas was the only all black school in the city of Kingsport at one time. Had less than 300 students, and that's from grade 1 through 12. And I would say one of the largest classes may have been 19. They've had seniors to graduate with six and nine students because that's all they had. And the school also has students from Gate City, Virginia, and from New Canton, Rollywood, Hawkins County. And that was back before integration. So kids from this end of Hawkins County came to Douglas and all the black kids from Gate City, Virginia, came to Douglas. Are you sure you went to Douglas? You looked a little bit too young. Uh, I wish. I'm definitely. <laughs> well, I know that uh, some of the people who are interested in the historical aspect and different things, being able to see some of the annuals and yearbooks and pictures, that'll be a great thing. Yes, we have. A, I brought a few 1940 yearbooks that they can see over there and just see how so, life was at going to the all-black school back in the days before integration. And uh, some of them may be a little surprised. They have the football team with the guys with the leather helmets. <laughs> the basketball team back when they wore the real short shorts for, <laughs> on the basketball team. <laughs> so it's, it's great insight into some of the black history in King Sport. Well, thanks a lot for telling us about that. And uh, hopefully people will get down here and check it out. And will you be back next year probably? Uh, we'll definitely be back. All right, thanks a lot. I'm going to walk around and see some of the uh, sounds that the different drums make.
From the Gem Circle, this is Chad Riggs reporting. Okay, uh, we're down here with Inome, and who's your friend, Inome? Uh, this is Jenny Rogers. Jenny Rogers from, what do you have here? For the Connection, First Broad Street, United Methodist. Okay, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the uh, drum circle is down there? At uh, There's an event that's ongoing. Yeah, the drum circle is something that we started just last year, and last year in the summer. And uh, we're doing a drum circle on Friday nights. Uh, we started last year. Tell them more about it. You know more about it. <laughs> well, we're going to start. Uh, the drum circle usually goes through the summer. We started last summer at Fun Fest, and we just wanted something that was um, a community outreach to where we could all get together and just do just what these kids are doing here except for you know just bring some drummers out and have a good time so we did it through the summer and we decided it was such a success we're going to start it back up and and do it friday nights in may and then we'll see how that moves into june june and july so it says here it's downtown gazebo next to the public library from 7 to 9 p.m this is sponsored by first broad street united methodist church uh and it's the, there is a contemporary worship that uh, that I am the worship leader of at First Broad Street, and that's called the Connection, and it's it meets in the Fellowship Hall, and we have we sponsor two outreaches. One is a a dance ministry, and the other is we just have a drum circle that we just do for the community. These are things we just get out and do for our community, and uh, so the gazebo was just a. a a downtown spot and it's kind of good because that Glen Bruce Park allows more drummers to get out and have picnics. People would come and eat before before we started drumming. Very nice. It's just a great place for families and and yeah, people and to hang out. Bring, the church brings out quite a few drums. So the church will bring out 10, 15 drums. So if they don't have a drum, they can come and show up and play. Um, or if you have a drum, a lot of people, they have a drum, you really don't have a place to play. So it's a great place to to get out, be able to play. And it's a great fellowship, too. It's great. It's, it's a wonderful activity. Wonderful activity. Is this uh, just for Methodists, or is this open to everyone? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 it's really, um, I mean, a drum circle is just a community thing. It's uh, We sponsor it, and the reason we're sponsoring it is so that we could bring some instruments out there. Uh, and so I haul all the chairs out there from our church, and then I haul these drums, most of these drums are from the church, and, um, and set them up, and just anyone can come and play. Well, Jenny, and, and you know me, it was great to speak with you again, great to speak with you, and uh, hopefully people will be able to head out. Again, that's Friday nights in May, 7 to 9 p.m. at the Drum Circle at the Gazebo. Thanks. Great. If you get a chance, take, take a listen to us. We here now with Jason from the Kingsport Parks and Rec Department, and what he's actually done today is uh, show movies of black heroes or artists or whatever. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jason so he can tell you what he's done today. Okay. Hello, my name is Jason Wilburn from Kingsport Parks and Recreation. Uh, we we today uh, today we showed uh, the Ernie Davis story, the new movie uh, called The Express. And what it what it's telling it shows you back in the '60s and '70s it uh, deals with uh, gives you information about segregation and actually he was the first black Heisman Trophy winner and I guess that's about it. What's up? Peace and blessings. My name is Carlton Relaford from Kingsport, currently in Knoxville, also known as Star, spiritually tuned among rhythm and rhyme, and uh, with me. I got one of my partners in crime here, uh, George uh, Washington Rogers. Uh, we do call him George Washington, or Wash for short. Uh, he is a uh, photographer and uh, filmmaker. And uh, we're here at the Renaissance Center. I'm doing a workshop on drama and acting. Uh, I'm also a musician, a singer-songwriter, and a, a spoken word artist. And uh, George has helped me put together this documentary uh, it's called Four Walls. It was um, really supposed to be about uh, uh, the, the the struggles of an artist uh, on the streets of Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, there, uh, I'm a I'm a member of a group called Black Sunshine Arts and Entertainment, and these are some of the members. 
uh, in the group. This is uh, Ray of Sunshine. Um, wait, who is that? Ray of oh, yeah. That's Ray of Sunshine. That's uh, DK, our drop knowledge. That's Black Atticus on the end, and right here, number three, that's myself. Um, just due to uh, time constraints and everything, uh, low budget, <laughs> you know, uh, we just had to um, narrow it down to uh, one subject, and it just ended up uh, being me, only because at the time I didn't have a job, and I was able to put in a lot of time. <laughs> um, so we're just here kind of promoting uh, some of the work uh, that we're doing, um, uh, letting her know about the book. Uh, this is the first copy of the Four Walls book that George did. Uh, it's just um, uh, uh, photos and some poetry. Can you tell oh, definitely. Thank you, Star. You're welcome. Yeah, this is a, kind of like the first book, but we also have the DVD and the book online that you could view for free. It's uh, you can view the um, documentary at fourwallsfilm.com. That's a numeral four, so it's numeral four walls w a l l s film.com. And you could check out a preview of the book. And a preview of uh, Star's work and watch the 45-minute um, film in its entirety. So that would be great if you could see more of Star and see if, uh, some of his uh, performances. That would be great if you check it out. And uh, also you can uh, see the uh, go to our, our website, blacksunshine.org. Uh, we do uh, schools, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> any kind of parties. Um, uh, blacksunshine.org uh, there's a schedule up of some of our performances that we might have coming up um, and uh, if you want us to come to your school come to your church uh, we are a faith based organization well, we'll come to your church or school uh, anywhere that our, our, our gas money or your gas money uh, will get us <laughs> shameless plug you know you gotta do that and uh, we do a slam uh, that's a, a performance poetry every first and third Friday in Knox in Market Square at the World Grotto. That's the first and third Friday. Uh, the open mic starts at 630. You can come and get up and sing, recite some poetry, read, whatever you want to do. Uh, and we have a feature that comes at like 7, 730. Phenomenal poets from uh, all, all, all across the country. We bring in poets from um, uh, L.A. and New York and uh, Boston and North Carolina, Texas, all over the place. And the actual slam starts at 730. Come check us out. Oh, my man and George also has another book, The Natty Lovejoys. I'll let him tell you about it. Uh, I will be performing with The Natty Lovejoys at Camp Reggae uh, this summer. So I'll let him tell you about it. Oh, it's just another documentary because I'm trying to promote independent artists, especially from East Tennessee because that's where I was born and raised. You know, the whole axiom, it's just like in a bloom where you're planted. I totally uh, agree with that. And I want to promote artists from the area. These are a reggae group that lives in East Tennessee, Sassafras, Tennessee. Um, they play reggae. They actually play in Johnson City, which is just in the Tri-Cities area. It's beautiful music, promotes universal mind, universal love, reggae vibes. If you love Bob Marley, you'll love them. You should check out the website in the book. It's called uh, nonreturningstatus.com, N-O-N, returningstatus.com. It's a brilliant concept. It blends Buddhist, Rastafarianism, voodoo, and Christianity. So definitely check that out along with uh, Carlton Star Relaford's um, biography slash documentary, Four Walls. So that's pretty much, yeah, definitely. And uh, my contact information is... Uh... <laughs> In case you gotta book me, you know, so you got you gotta give it. Uh, my contact information is Star on Earth S T A R R Star on Earth at Gmail. Uh, I also have a MySpace page that is kind of currently still in uh, still under works, but that is the same thing. Star on Earth at Hotmail is uh, the uh, uh, the MySpace page. Um, Star Rutherford on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, I don't know, I'm not on Twitter yet. YouTube, uh, just type in star. Type in star, yeah, on YouTube. Right, Four Walls Slam Poetry um, on MySpace. The documentary... The documentary is on sale at Amazon.com. <laughs> you know, make sure you get that. I don't get any proceeds from that, so you got to get some off of me personally, too. But if you buy something uh, online, that just goes back into the company so we can make more of these... And make more of these and, you know, help him to help promote some of these other artists that, that he has such an a incredible vision of, of capturing. And I thank you to uh, King Sport and the Renaissance Center.
Uh, my name is Clark Jenkins, senior pastor at First Broad Street, United Methodist Church. We are one of the sponsors of this event and uh, also part of the uh, major drum circle as well. We, we have the drum circles in our congregation and our contemporary service. This is every Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45. And so we encourage you to be a part of that uh, emerging ministry if you like drums, and we have them every, every Sunday. Thank you. I'm Kitty Frazier, the Parks and Recreation Manager for the City of Kingsport, and we are so excited about being involved with the Black History Day today and for being involved with the entire month. We've been providing various programs and facilities to help to accentuate what Kingsport has to offer and to show our support of the history of this community and the cultural opportunities we have. And today's been a great day. We've had movies and entertainment, music and dancing, and just a great opportunity to bring our community together from all different diverse cultures. Take up your armor and prepare to fight. We're on the side of Jehovah Shaddai. Take up your armor and prepare to fight. We're on the side of Jai, the Most High, the Most High God. There is a season for everything that's under the sun. There's a time for war, there is a time for love. You got to be ready, yes, every day. There ain't no time for sleeping. We got to watch and pray. So I say, take up your armor. And prepare to fight We're on the side of Jehovah Shaddai Take up your armor And prepare to fight We're on the side of Jai the Most High The Most High God Well, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching our program on Black History Day here, February 16th, 2009. We sure do have, uh, appreciate your hospitality, what you do in the community, what you do to have us here, and all the things they offer. And I've had a great time. And uh, for Channel 16, see you later. Prepare to fight. We're on the side of Jai the Most High, the Most High God.